All right, welcome everyone. Um, we're here for Touch Lab Share. Um, it's an exciting day. Netflix uh, just announced that they are using Kotlin multi-platform on one of their apps. The app is called Prodigal and the announcement that they put out on their um, technology medium blog um, describes it as an app to innovate in the physical production of uh, TV shows and movies. One of the things that I want to call out in, in the post is, is a really good description that they provided for Kotlin Multi-Platform. They describe it as approaching cross-platform mobile development differently from other technologies in the space, stuff that we already know, um, while other technologies abstract away or completely replace platform-specific app development. Um, Kotlin Multi-Platform is complementary. Um, so I, I really love this quote at the end. It says, it's a new tool in the toolbox as opposed to replacing the toolbox. The first question that I have for the team is there are some very specific business logic requirements that the app is described as having. What are we seeing in this announcement that, that ties to that particular um, theme that we're always talking about? Logic itself is not generally platform specific, right? Like uh, unless you're doing something that is very particular to iOS or, or Android, logic is, is logic, right? So um, pure logic things certainly make sense, especially uh, if it's coming out here, it sounds fairly in, involved. Um, they also talked about um, some things I would, I would say dip into, not just logic, but architectural pieces, right? Like SQL Delight, uh, I would highlight immediately offline, which is one of those things that I get a little bit too in the weeds on. Um, yeah, so it, there's a quite a, it, it resonates entirely with all the stuff we talked about for, for building mobile applications. Yeah, I, I think the like the notes about um, like the need for offline usage in particular like hits a sweet spot that we often see with um, some of the other early adopters that we talked to. I think I, I also saw how one of the things we say about. KMP encouraging good architecture and apps that, that have uh, good architecture with, with decoupled platforms already like being ready for KMP. That seemed to be part of what drove their decision making. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I would throw out, which apologies if we're gonna ask this question later, the, the, the fact that you can include the libraries doesn't preclude you from doing other stuff you would wanna do in the native realm, which is, you know, of course I could wanna do Swift UI and the compose, all kind of stuff that was part of the appealing aspect to internal flow. Because they linked out to another trying to another shared architecture thing, which I didn't quite read entirely, but it was getting into React or Redux and kind of like this whole different direction. One of the things that stood out to me was the fact that our Xcode plugin was was utilized as part of this release. And for the folks that don't know much about the Xcode plugin. Um, again, the Xcode plugin was mentioned in, in this particular post. Um, could you just give us a quick overview of, of what the plugin does? A lot of the um, objects and stuff you hear about from JetBrains are, of course, in their own tools. So, like the um, Android Studio Debugger um, is like lets you debug your Kotlin code from within the Android side tooling. Um, what our thing adds is the ability to do that from the iOS native tooling, so from Xcode itself, it's meeting meeting the existing platform developers in the tools that they're already used to, rather than adding something new. It also colors the source files. I remember that, um, so they're a little more visually readable. Um, for iOS focused devs, you might immediately say plugin. I thought plugins were gone for Xcode. That is largely true. Uh, there are some edge cases such as talking about here, which is essentially being able to designate a different type of file as a source file that gets treated different by Xcode and then being able to apply debugging tooling, which is all a little bit uh, focused up. But we stopped there. Like we've talked to other people that have tried to take like our plugin as a base and try to like add all kinds of stuff on that. And they, they kind of quickly stop because you can't do anything with Xcode. It's very hard. Um, and I don't think, I think our goals are more like, we want something that is a, it's like a good first intro. I don't want to say gateway drug into Kotlin, but like essentially if you're an iOS developer, it's a read mostly tool. So you don't have to install a bunch of other stuff. And, you know, and actually what we're working on now, and I, I've been doing it for the last couple of weeks, really is um, packaging 
the Kotlin libraries for your team in such a way that um, you don't need to install a JVM. You can like include binary libraries with it, but also have access to debugging that code um, to facilitate larger team interaction, which is uh, it's one of the, it's like we're in the phase of Kotlin, at least from our perspective, where it's like, okay, people are putting this production now, it needs to be production ready from a tooling perspective. And we're doing a lot of focus on that. Yeah, which is partly why we haven't been doing a lot of, or at least me, I haven't been doing a lot of open source stuff. These are like much longer term bigger problems to kind of to, to chew on. But you know, we, we, we've had discussions with the Netflix team before, right, um, about their exploration and they reached out and we had a couple of conversations. Looking at how they use the Xcode plugin, were you surprised to see it used there? Um, how did they take advantage of it? What are our thoughts there? Not surprised. Like, very glad that they mentioned it, obviously, because we're, you know, we're trying to get attention for ourselves. But it is, you know, the reason that we put effort into it is because um, the nature of what we're trying to do with the technology, you, there's no way you're going to be successful in a team larger than a small handful of people without having support of some kind in Xcode for the team that needs to, to use the shared code. I, I don't think that's feasible. And I'm going to talk about this at some point on a technical deep dive later, but it's like, what's really good about the native side of things, actually, uh, the LLVM world, um, forgetting Apple in particular or Jeff Rates or whoever, we, we can kind of leverage the same, there's like this open, like, debugging and all this like tooling stuff that, that actually can be kind of cross leveraged. So the Android Studio plugin, which is Jeff Rains is focusing on, allows you to debug. It's using the same underlying stuff that we're using in the Xcode plugin. Anybody using all the kind of use the same stuff. So we're all going to kind of collectively benefit from that. I know it's going to deep dive even, but anyway, yada yada, not surprised. If you're trying to convince people on your team, if you have an iOS focused engineering org, or at least some part of it, without having support to, to open and debug and, and Xcode, I think it's going to be a, a big barrier to adoption. But one more thing I wanted to throw out before we forget, because they did um, mention, you know, see what the light in there and um, kind of been like trying to, to consciously take more effort to like, thanks, thanks to our partners uh, from Square. Who, um, you know, they make Super the Light, but they've also been heavily focused on making this technology um, ready for prime time and uh, doing a lot for the community. So, uh, I don't know, just calling them out. That was another familiar name that we saw in in, in that particular post that they, that they were using SQL Delight. So shout out to the Square team for, for sure. At the end, they describe Kotlin multi-platform um, technology reading, um, reaching an inflection point. What, what comes to mind? What did you think? There have been companies using Kotlin multi-platform in production for more than a year, maybe two years. Some of them were the earliest of adopters and they were ready to put into production. Um, but there's always that adoption curve. So in this inflection means we're getting to a point where it's becoming an early majority tooling ecosystem. There's with the alpha announcement, like you mentioned, like Russell mentioned, more and more people said, oh, it's ready. It depends on your company. Lots of other companies said, it's ready for us before that. Now we have more companies saying it's ready for us. And with Netflix saying, we're seeing this inflection point too, um, that just makes it all the more real. When I saw it, I, I thought of the talk at the Kotlin 1.4 event that it's it's time for Kotlin multi-platform mobile. And this feels like a response to that. Netflix saying, yes, it is. Why this might be an inflection point, now, ju not just because JetBrain said it's alpha, but what Kevin was starting to talk about with the tooling needing to be there and how we're emphasizing on the tooling. Uh, yeah, Kotlin, the language was there. Kotlin native, the compiler was there. Um, all the new tooling that's going around it with us making the Xcode plugin, with uh, the retooling of the, of the compiler that JetBrain is doing to allow better multi-platform usage across platforms. Uh, the tooling is at a point now where people can come into it without banging their head against the wall every day. Where the tooling is now supporting them, um, where this early majority can come in and be productive from the beginning. And, and that's the piece that that we've always kind of said, like 
this is why you would have faith in something like this early on is like JetBrains is a tooling focus company. Like even if stuff isn't great at the very beginning, like you know that that's the area where it's going to get good over time. And we're starting to see that pay off. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, <clears throat> that's why uh, talking about the tech, you know, it's always kind of like if it was a different company, I wouldn't, wouldn't trust it. If it was going to work out. Um, I am a little too deep in the weeds in general. So I, you know, and like, sure, you can use this. You know, people are like, it's not production ready. Like, that's not a binary. Number one, number two, like, uh, I don't know if you could use it in production. I know that if if, if we need to build an app, we could. But that's because you know, I could tell you, I can point to C plus plus in the runtime where things. You know, what I mean, like, we're I'm way too close to the metal to to really call that. It's not minimizing. Like, this is the quote unquote, you know, fang company that's putting something into production and saying that's an inflection point and, and um, for whatever that's worth, it's gonna be a big signal. So that's cool. But yeah, like I've been inside the machine telling people that it's ready, you know, it's kind of good that someone from outside is like, yeah, maybe, you know, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, and I, and I think that approach um, is one that even Netflix is using, right? They, they described Kotlin multi-platform and then gave you three reasons for why their particular product um, that, that they were working on, it, why call it multi-platform made sense for it. So it really does depend on where your team is, where your product is. Um, if you're looking at call it multi-platform, we definitely want to be a resource. We have pre-reading material. We have a starter project. Um, we even have a starter project for the more um, iOS focused developers. Um, we'll link out to that all in the video. Um, however, if you're at the point where this announcement got you to a point where you, you want to go ahead and, and actually put Kotlin multi-platform in production and are looking for outside help, uh, please contact us. Um, the best email is hello at touchlab.co. And we really look forward to hearing more stories like this. Hopefully we can partner with your organization on, on bringing that story to life and, and communicating it to, to the community. Um, so Kevin, uh, Justin, Russell, Sam, thanks so much for your time. Um, and we'll catch you in the next episode of Touch Lab Share.